Hey y'all, it's Day or Day La Soul. Um, and for those of you who have been following me, I'm here with a life update. Uh, you guys can pretty much see what's going on by the title of the video. But I'm going to go ahead and tell my story anyway because as soon as it happened to me, um, I wish that I had like a conversation really with my family. Um, which I'm going to get into that. But I wish, you know, it was something that was more talked about, especially when I found out how common it was. So today I'm going to tell you guys um, about my journey with fibroids, which is something that um, my physician, my surgeon who's doing my surgery, she told me that it impacts up to 70% of women. And most women do not know that they have them because they're usually the size of like somewhere between a raisin and a grapefruit or not grapefruit <laughs> that's what i have usually between the size of a raisin and a grape you wouldn't know that you were having issues if it's that size it wouldn't really impact much but um as i just told you guys i have two huge ones one the size of a grapefruit and i have one that is the size of like a small watermelon and yeah i'm just gonna get into the journey and start all the way from the beginning and how i found out um so we can have conversations about it. I feel like it's something that needs to be talked about because I wish it was something that was talked about in my family and y'all my internet family. So we're going to talk about it. And I'm wearing my Sephora stuff because I just filmed some Sephora content and I was like, let me go ahead and knock this video out because we're about to go hiking. But um, I went for a routine physical. Um, our normal doctor was filled up and I just wanted to hurry up and get it over with because I kept stalling it. So I went to the other woman that goes there, um, that works there because I just wanted to get it over with. And thank God I did because that lady, that lady was thorough. So we're sitting there, she's doing my physical, did my breast exam, um, check my eyes, check my ears, my mouth, all that. And she goes to start pressing on my stomach. And she's like, are you pregnant? And I'm like, no, I'm not pregnant. My stomach has <laughs> just been big for the past couple years. And she was like, no, 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 no. This feels like a baby head. So I'm sitting here like touching like a baby head. I'm sitting there touching and it is hard. And I'm like, well, my stomach's always been hard um, because I've been skinny my whole life. My stomach to me has always felt hard. And so I'm like, in, in my mind, I'm like dismissing everything that she's saying. Like, no, I'm not pregnant. And no, that ain't a baby head. My stomach just be hard. <laughs> like, maybe I got gas. So as I'm touching, she was like, no, feel right here and then feel right there. And then my stomach is always, let me not say hard. It was firm, but not hard. When I started getting like lower on one side of my stomach, I was like, whoa, that is definitely something there. She's like, yeah, that feels like a head. Um, and the nurse was in the room with me as well. So the doctor and the nurse was in there. Um, and the nurse comes over and they're like getting excited like, oh my God, you're pregnant. And I'm like, I'm not excited. Cause I'm like, first of all, I don't want to live right now. <laughs> I'm not excited. So I'm sitting there panicking. She starts touching on the other side while I'm still trying to figure out what the heck this thing is in me. Cause in my head, I'm like, I'm not pregnant. And if I am pregnant, this is a big ass baby head. Like I should have felt that I was pregnant. Like this thing should have been moving. Like, you know, so like so many thoughts are racing through my head. One is like, I'm not pregnant. And the two is like, if I am pregnant, why is this baby not moving? Like, is it dead? Like, what, what the fuck is going on? So, um, then she starts touching on the other side. She's like, oh yeah, here's the butt. Here's the baby butt. So I'm touching and I'm like, oh my God, it's a butt and a head. And in my mind, I feel like I'm not pregnant though. Like, what, what is this? And she, so at this point, the other, the nurse is there. She's touching on the other side. So they're both like, we're all just sitting there touching my stomach. Like a baby is in there. And she's like, you don't feel like, you never felt like flutters or like poking. Like it's not moving. And I'm like, no, it, this all happened like a matter of 30 seconds. It went from like excitement to like concern. She's like, okay, so we need to do some pregnancy tests. So I did a blood pregnancy test. Well, I did two urine pregnancy tests. They both came back negative. And then I had to do a blood one. That one came back negative too. So then they were like, you need to do an ultrasound because something is in your stomach. Um, and then they're asking me like, have I been feeling sick? Have I missed periods? All that stuff. And I have not. Um, no, nothing that I could think of other than my stomach is bigger than what it normally is. But I chalked it up to COVID weight. Y'all heard me. I've been saying this for a while. Um, COVID weight. Because I did gain a bunch of weight when they locked everything down. So at this point, they're like, we need to do an ultrasound. I get an ultrasound appointment. Uh, and... The woman who's doing the ultrasound is like, well, you're not pregnant. There's there's no baby in there, but you have like 
severe bruising all in your lower abdomen and in your pelvis. And I'm like, from what? And she's like, you weren't in like a car accident, no trauma to the stomach or anything like that. She was like, we normally see this in car accidents um, or some kind of biking accident or like when elderly people fall. And I'm like, no. And then she was like, the weird thing is, it's new and old looking bruises, like hematomas. She said, some of it looks new, some of it looks fresh, some of it looks old, like it's been there for a while. Um, and then she's like touching on my stomach too. And she was like, does it hurt? And I'm like, no, nothing hurts. Like, I don't know what y'all see. So she was like, well, I, I'm not a radiologist. Um, so I can't diagnose you and tell you what it is. Um, and I just do the reading and I record it and I send it off. So she was just like, you know, um, we're going to send it off to the radiologist and then we'll let them, they'll give you a call back or the primary will give you a call back and let you know what um, they think it is. And then she was very concerned as well. And I do want to give big ups to my medical team because I went there initially because it was a black doctor um, that I went to college with and I wanted a black primary. Um, she ended up getting pregnant and she relocated and I stayed there anyway because the team was just so nice and so caring and they always had appointments available. It just wasn't like the typical hospital experience where I'm used to like waiting an hour even though I had a scheduled appointment having to pay for parking walk a block. It was just a nice intimate but big practice. It's a medical plaza. It has a bunch of different stuff in there. Anyway, um, I do want to give a big shout out to them because they as soon as they realized something was wrong all my appointments were back to back they were trying to schedule my initial ultrasound for october the 8th which today is october the first or the second the second so i wouldn't have even had i wouldn't have even known this at the point i know this now um but they were like no that's unacceptable we need to mark the stat so they were all they marked all of my stuff stat um, because whatever it was in my stomach was big and they ended up saying that it was going whatever it was when she actually like examined me when they did my ultrasound they were saying it was going from one side of my pelvis to almost my navel and then the other one was going from below my navel almost up into my rib cage kind of like where my bra just kind of sits at um and they were like whatever this is it's huge you gotta figure out what it is so um, do want to give a big shout out to them because I really feel like they cared about me. I was a priority. They wanted to figure out what this was. Everybody was really like on top of everything. They moved appointments around for me. Um, and that's a big thing being a black woman because we know we've all experienced how we go there, you know, to doctors and we get dismissed or they don't care. They just kind of whatever in and out. And I didn't have that experience. I'm really... I really keep giving them a shout out, like, and, and like, you know, giving them praise for doing that. That's what they're supposed to do, but, you know, I'm, I'm open about it. I'm like, black women, we normally don't experience this level of care. So, shout out to them. Did the ultrasound, got the call back from my primary, and they said that it looked like uh, fluid on the ultrasound that was in multiple places, um, and I needed to get an MRI. My insurance initially denied my MRI. I have Blue Cross Blue Shield through state insurance and they are trash. Blue Cross Blue Shield through the state with my job is trash, like pure trash. They don't want to pay for anything. My primary, well, she wasn't my primary, but the woman who I went to that time, which she's now my primary, um, so I'm referring to her that now, but um, she decided that, you know, she was going to go to bats for me. She argued them down. They approved my MRI. Um, my MRI appointment wasn't supposed to be till November. And she got that moved up to the same week. So all of my appointments, I had like five, four or five appointments all happened within a week of each other. This started on Tuesday. I knew what was going on by Friday and I seen the surgeon on Monday. Like that's how quick everything went. Y'all, nobody ever told me how MRI goes. And if nobody ever told y'all, I'll go. They have to put an IV in you and you sit there. Um, my MRI was supposed to be 30 minutes. It ended up having to be an hour because uh when they were doing the initial scan they said they needed they just put an mri in for my lower abdomen and she was like no we need to examine your pelvis so again shout out to the mri team they were like no nah, we gotta go we gotta go lower than that and see what's going on um because they touched me as well to see you know where they needed to put the uh cameras at for the mri but anyway mris are annoying i sat in that machine for like an hour it's super loud they gave me earplugs it was still loud uh, i wish i had ask them I probably couldn't anyway have my headphones in with my noise cancellation but it, it was very annoying the IV and then being strapped down to that thing and slid it was like an alien probe that's that's really how I feel like the MRI went anyway got the MRI and they told me that there were masses um but they can't say you know what it was again they're not they don't read the MRIs they just do them somebody would get back to me um, which they weren't supposed to be telling me that stuff, but I asked and they told me anyway. That evening, got the call back. My primary called me back and told me that I had, uh, fibroid tumors, uh, one of which was the size of a grapefruit and one of which was the size, she said it was a cantaloupe. 
um and that's pretty huge i'm gonna show y'all my stomach and everything in a minute but she was like you need to go see a surgeon asap um we can refer you to one i'm gonna find you one that, that can get you in it's good and one that has a good reputation um because we need to get this out of you asap so at this point i'm looking up stuff trying to learn about mri i mean uh fibroids i've heard about fibroids before don't know much about them other than they just happen you just get them and i know they're not uh you know anything they can be dangerous but typically they're just a routine procedure you get a laparoscopy something like that <laughs> you get that you get it taken out whatever so i'm looking it up trying to figure things out um and then i decided well let me see what black because i know i had to go to a, a gynecological surgeon so let me see what black ones we have in the area so go on different websites looking at black gynecologists who perform surgeries there was a thread on facebook about black gynecologists and surgeons in this area and the same doctor kept coming up over and over again i'm not gonna say her name um but she kept coming up over and over again people were like yeah she she's very good but she's like tough love like she she gonna tell you how it is and she don't play so i'm like that's the kind of person that i want on my team i want somebody who's gonna give me give it to me straight and they're not gonna play about me because i've never had a major surgery before ever i've never ever 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 had i've never even like been sedated put under none of that stuff so so i called her they answered the phone um told them what was going on they were very reassuring she's like i just want to let you know that you know you sound really nervous fibroids is typically you know a routine thing of course we cannot tell you but she was like you know don't don't worry about it um we're gonna take good care of you you're in good hands made me feel really good because at this point i'm freaking out thinking like damn i'm looking online and i seen stuff about hysterectomies like am i not gonna be able to have kids like they're gonna take out my uterus they're gonna take out my damn ovaries like what what is gonna happen so I scheduled the appointment with her and then i came in for the appointment and she she is off the chain y'all she like this little caribbean lady but she know her stuff and she just like how they said she is very very tough love so when i came in they were like you're miss covington that's my last name y'all and then i'm like yes i'm miss covington and they're looking at me funny and then didn't really say much when i got to the back she explained why they thought um because my fibroids are so big because at this point the surgeon has seen my mri um and she's ready to you know get everything taken care of they thought because my fibroids are so big that i was 218 pounds or 281 pounds but i'm 128 pounds y'all and when she went through and because that's her profession you know that's her specialty my primary is not her specialty to be doing mris and doing gynecological surgery or whatever the word is none of that they were saying that them things were so huge that they thought i was like it was an error on my chart and I was just a obese like a big woman so she was like okay we gotta get this out of you ASAP and then at that point they asked me like you didn't have a uh, your periods aren't crazy like you're not having any pain like none of that and I'm gonna tell y'all now my period starting off uh normally until like I hit my mid 20s late 20s my periods were only like two to three days of heavy bleeding not even heavy like moderate bleeding and then just spotting until it was gone now my periods are like three to five days of bleeding um and then by day seven i'm pretty much done to me i thought that was normal and i'm thinking okay y'all i'm 30 now that's how periods work you know you get older your stuff changes so that was a sign that i had fibroids but i didn't know the other sign was the weight gain i thought my weight gained because in backup in college i was always between 93 and 98 pounds um after i graduated college then i was between like 104 to 109 all the time and then slowly crept up to about 115 and then after covid hit i had got all the way up to like 139.8 pounds which is almost 140 pounds again these are not alarming numbers i'm like all right i'm getting older i ain't working out like i used to i eat bad um COVID happened, everybody talking about how they got big in COVID, that's what I'm thinking it is. So I did lose all of that weight, but my stomach barely shrunk. Um, so now obviously I'm not 139 anymore, I'm 128. Um, and from the front, I look perfectly normal from the front, but from the side, I do look pregnant. And she told me that I'm pretty much like the equivalency of six months pregnant right now, but with a fibroid. <laughs> well, with multiple fibroids. So I didn't have any like, um, symptoms other than the weight gain and my period got a little longer but to me these are not big deals and i don't sit around because people are like well how do you feel that i don't sit around just touching on my stomach and whatever and then and when I'm, even as i'm touching on my stomach now i'm touching the center of my stomach these things are on the lower part and on the outside of my stomach so i don't i didn't feel them i just didn't okay so then we do everything we do my um she does like a vaginal exam which is really uncomfortable she moves them around and stuff just to try to see 
uh, how mobile they were so she can determine what kind of surgery that I would get because you can get uh, the laparoscopy thing, which is when they make little incisions, it's almost like a laser surgery. They pretty much zap them and some suck them or remove them out that way, and you just have little itty bitty incisions. Or you have to do a myectomy, which is basically a C-section. Or there's like a bikini scar, and then there's like that vertical scar that goes from your navel all the way down. Or you have to get the bikini and vertical scar, and like a T-scar is what they called it. Or you have to have a full-blown hysterectomy. She said I don't have to have a hysterectomy from what she can see, from what they can see on the MRI, which they, she said it's not 100% because there could be something blocking something, and she won't know until she actually opens it up and looks in there. Fortunately, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and say now, fortunately, I do not have any of them infused or intertwined with my uterus or my ovaries, so I get to keep my uterus and my ovaries, thank God, because I do want to have at least one kid one day. I'm not rushing for it, but I do want to have them one day, but she said your ovaries, your uterus, fallopian tubes, everything looks fine from the MRI. She obviously won't know until I she gets in there, and then we have to have conversations about, so what happens if, if I do have a fibroid in there? Do I want her to take it out? Do I want to just uh, you know, live with it, try to have kids, and then, um, get it removed at a later date. Kind of got to figure that out. But I mean, that's something I'm still thinking about. In my mind, I'm just saying, just whatever, take it out. I'd rather, it, I'm no good to anybody if I, if I'm not well. You know what I'm saying? My fibroids are called, are pedunculated or pedaculated or something, where they're, uh, now see if I can find a picture. They're basically attached to a stalk, which is attached to my uterus. Like, if this is my uterus, there's like a stalk that's like this that goes up and they're attached to that in their way. She said she can take the stock and that out um, and I'll be fine, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan. Unfortunately though, I have to have a C-section and I will have the bikini scar, which I'm hoping that's it. But she was saying that one of them is so high up that she's worried that I will end up having to have a T-scar. Um, she said she will do everything in her power to not give that T scar to me because she called me bang. She was like, I can tell you bang. Like she she talk a lot of junk. She be in there cussing and everything. But that's my kind of energy. I like people who talk junk. Like I was asking her, like, do you know when the surgery should be? She was like, no, I don't know. She told me that. And then I asked her again like a day later, like, do you have like a ballpark of when the surgery might be so I can get my life together? Cause I'm gonna be out for four to six weeks um on bed rest. And she was like, When I have the ball, you'll have the park. That's how she is. I love it. Um it's not for everybody. But it's for me. I, I like that kind of energy and I got a smart ass mouth like that. She did her exam and everything. Like she went in there, was moving around. She can feel one of them. She was like abdomen, like outside of my stomach, pushing them around. Ever since then, I don't know if it's just like a, a conscious thing because I'm aware of them. Now I can feel them. Like if I lay on my stomach on like a hard surface, like I laid on the floor, I can feel them moving around. The other thing I did want to mention too is I got my blood work done um, and my kidneys are reading um, abnormal. I forget exactly what it is, but my I had like high enzyme levels and then low, it was either red or white blood cell levels, which I think I mentioned this in a video like a year ago, but they're... It's still not like dangerous. Like it, I don't know what the numbers are, y'all. I'm gonna just throw a number. If dangerous or in the red, they do it like red, yellow, and green. Right now I'm in the yellow, but right on the verge of the green. So like if 180 was fine, then I'm right at 179, which is not terrible. Uh, but again, that's just a sign. She said that too. She said that this is not something that you know that just happens. You've had these for years. She said that um, with a more thorough gynecologist before, I was going to that primary and getting everything done as far as pap smears go, but she was like, that's why she tells people, and I'll tell you guys, you know, go, even if, even though your primary can do a pap smear, um, that's not their specialty. She said that she tells everybody, go to a gynecologist, because that is their specialty. They're more thorough. So they can get it done on a basic level, but if you want thorough care, you need to go to a gynecologist. So she ended up telling me that they've been here for years. They probably grew a lot. When I gain weight, either because I gain weight or I gain weight because they were growing. Cause she was like, they feed off of carbs. That's pretty much the rundown of that. I ended up talking to my family just to try to figure out because I looked online and they said that it's like hereditary. And I'm like, nobody in my family has talked about fibroids. We talk about everything and talk about everybody. Gossip, talk shit, all that stuff, but nobody talks about that. So I ended up um, asking my aunt, had they had it? Turns out my grandma on my maternal side she had it, ended up having to have a full hysterectomy to get rid of hers, but that was like back in the, maybe like 70s when that happened. So the, the, you know, medical field wasn't as advanced as it is now. And then I talked to my aunt on my dad's side. All of my aunts have had fibroids and all of them have had to have surgeries. 
However, all of them were able to get that laparoscopy or whatever thing done. I'm gonna be the first one that has to do like the whole C-section thing. But it, fortunately, fingers crossed, I don't have to have a hysterectomy. So that's why I wanted to get on here and talk about it because I don't hear people talking about it a lot. And it's something that we need to be talking about, especially as black women, if it's, if it's affecting us at a disproportionate rate. Um, I'm gonna keep doing videos on it and talking about it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do this all in one long, like hour long video or if I'm gonna upload it in increments, but I do wanna talk about it. But this is where I'm at with it right now and I will keep you guys posted. Okay, so it's been about two weeks since I filmed the first part. Y'all see I got a whole new set of braids and everything. <laughs> but um, it's been about two weeks. Um, my surgery is next week. I'm just about already, I caught up on like my actual nine to five. I caught up on things I need to do as far as like influencing YouTube. My assistant is ready to take over my email so I can just chill for the next few months. So I did have my pre-ops this week. I had to have a pre-op with the surgeon and a pre-op with the actual hospital for like anesthesiology and stuff. Mm, they went okay. Um, yesterday my pre-op with the actual hospital I had to do more lab work and my anemia got worse and my, uh, what is it, red blood cell count is higher which is directly related to my kidneys. And I told you guys that this thing is like pressing on my kidneys. So it has to come out. Um, I'm not in any pain, not having any issues. Um, again, no excessive bleeding. I'm about to come in my cycle now. I'm not cramping or anything. Like it's, it's really surreal that it's, it's happening outside from the fact that my stomach is big. So yeah, I decided to do this video uh, maybe in two or three parts, but I wanted to do a video with everything before the surgery. Um, and then I'll do another video, you know, a couple weeks after I have it. Um, cause one of the big things when I've been talking to people about it is like, and even me was like curious, like how my stomach is going to look afterwards. So I do want to show you guys what my stomach looks like now before I have the surgery and just to see if it's going to make that big of a difference in like my bloating. And I know that sounds really vain and my surgeon, my surgeon keeps calling me vain. She's like, girl, all you care about is your stomach. And I was like, I mean... I trust that you're gonna do a good job and get it out and you're not gonna mutilate me. So at this point, I just wanna see what my stomach gonna look like when it's over. And I know I know that's bad, but it is what it is. Like I'm not in any pain. I'm not sick. I'm not unwell. I'm just I'm just curious about how I'm gonna look afterwards. Um <laughs> Because I'm not, I'm not like sick, so it's like I don't feel sick. I feel like I'm just getting it done because I know, you know, at some point I will have an issue with my kidneys, especially because in the past, how long has it been? It's been a month. I got my first lab work done on the 22nd, and then today is the 23rd. So um, it's been a month since everything started. It's been about three weeks since I found out what was going on. But, um, and my kidneys are having some issues because it's like the red blood cell count just keeps going up and hopefully this is the issue i hope you know i hope <laughs> there's nothing going on besides this but they said that one of them is pressing on my actual kidney so um that could be what's causing my red blood cell count to uh go up but i'm hoping that you know it was something else on there too i'm waiting on them to call me back to like elaborate more on what that was but i'm hoping that everything was okay i can have my surgery next week i'm ready to get it over with y'all i really am i'm just ready to get it over with but i'm going to show you guys my stomach this is my stomach how i normally like suck it in and whatnot and this is like how it really looks um yeah don't look like much from the front right but when i turn to the side that's that's pretty much how my stomach looks it's, it just looks like i'm pregnant and i can actually feel them now it's really weird um and when i lay on my back you can see them there's like a protrusion that comes out you can kind of see that my stomach i feel like i can see it right now but i don't know if y'all be able to see it i feel like right here it looks like way more rounded and that's where the big one is and then here it doesn't look like as round here but i have the cantaloupe one it's like right there i, I kind of feel like i can see it and then right here is the grapefruit one. It's like down in here. Um, so this is it. And my stomach is like so, so, so hard down here. And it's like crazy that I never, never like, I always thought my stomach was hard, but I never stopped to thought, think like something was wrong. But yeah, you see how like it goes in, my stomach goes in right here, but right here it does not, That that's where my tumor is. But yeah, I just like I'm pregnant. And hopefully I won't look pregnant um after after this but this is it and yeah y'all will hear from me after after surgery wish me luck this is my first time having 
um, surgery and like being under anesthesia and I'm gonna be in the hospital for two or three days. I am nervous about all that, but it's like, I've done all I can do to prepare for it. I feel like I'm in great hands. My medical team is awesome. Everybody's so like nice and knowledgeable and they care. Um, that's, that's again, that's, that's what made me feel so like comfortable and at peace with it. It's like, I know that I, if anything goes wrong, I know that I'm in like the safest hands place possible because people are so punctual they're so like they care about me so yeah i feel good but anyway that's pretty much it y'all i'm gonna see y'all after surgery again wish me luck and if you guys have had fibroids and you know um have had surgery there's different kind of surgeries you can have um if you guys have had it please share it in the comments i know that it's something that is talked about because it's not my first time hearing about fibroids but this is like my first time like hearing about it in such detail like i thought people got them and i didn't realize like you have to have a major surgery to uh get them removed um i just didn't realize the severity of what it is we hear about it and it's, it's something that is trivial you know some people don't even have to get them removed because they're stay the size of like a grape or like a raisin or something um their whole lives but i just feel like it's something that we especially black women should talk about especially if it's something that's disproportionately affecting us so that's what prompted me to do this video because i feel like if I, every single one of my aunts have had it i feel like it's something like a conversation that we should be having at like family gatherings like day make sure you're getting your well i was getting my pap smears but you know make sure that you're being you let them know that your family has a history of fibroid tumors and they need to be checking thoroughly for that like that's something that needs to be discussed because based off what the surgeon is saying i've had these for years i do want to have a dialogue about it that's something that we need to talk about so that's why i'm making the video and yeah i will see you guys after surgery bye